All right, so we're going in. The great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. It's been all over the news this month. It's been advertised as an event so rare that it hasn't happened in 800 years and will not happen again for another 60. Even Google made a doodle for the occasion. So, us being mere mortals, let's try and understand what its significance is, a bit of its history and why it happens. Over 2000 years ago, a brand new bright star appeared in the desert sky on a winter night. In writings that were very old at the time, it was said that a new star appears every time a great king is born. Some wise men who had heard these stories started following the star which led them to the country of Judea. They kept following the star until they found the baby king in a barn. By now you must have realized what story I'm referring to. The star, now popularly known as the Star of Bethlehem, may have been a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, as Johannes Kepler thought in 1614. Future researchers have suggested it might also have been a triple conjunction of Saturn, Jupiter and Venus. Let us now jump 1600 years into the future, to the year 1610, when the astronomer Galileo was making the first observations of Jupiter and Saturn using his handmade telescope. He discovered the moons of Jupiter, shattering the geocentric model. He observed the rings of Saturn, which he thought were fixed moons on both ends of the planet. Another great conjunction is said to have happened in the year 1623 but the sun was on the same side as the planets and thus it was not observable from earth. Now to explain what I meant by that we need to dip into how the planets orbit the sun. All the planets orbit the Sun in almost the same two-dimensional plane. The reason for that is best left for another video. Okay, so as we know, the Earth, the third planet from the Sun, takes 365 days or one year to complete one orbit. Jupiter fifth from the Sun takes 10 years and Saturn sixth from the Sun takes 30 years. So Jupiter being faster than Saturn overtakes or laps over Saturn every 20 years as you can see in the animation which obviously is not to scale. And when this happens, the planets are the closest to each other. Now from the vantage point of the Earth, this event cannot be seen if the Sun is on the same side as the planet or it would be daytime and we would not be able to see any planets in the sky. So it needs to be at night or at dusk like this year in 2020.
But if this event is likely to occur every 20 years, what is so special about this year, you may ask? Well, as I mentioned, the planets orbit almost in a 2D plane. Almost. Which means it's not perfectly plane. Because in that case, Jupiter would completely cover Saturn from Earth and instead of a conjunction, we would have an eclipse. You see, there are slight variances in the orbits of the planets where they drift in and out of the plane. Now this year, that variance is minimum. As a result, the planets will appear 0.1 degrees apart from each other. The next conjunction is set to happen on 2040, but the planets will be much farther apart, 1.1 degrees, which is 11 times that of this year. So yes, this year is significantly special, and the next time this would be occurring is 2080, 60 years from now. It's difficult to say how many of us will be around by that time. And that is why this event is being advertised as a once in a lifetime event, which it truly is. All right, enough said. Let's get to the observations now. I live in Kolkata, a heavily populated city in Eastern India with high air and light pollution. I'm also using a Brezza 7700, which is a modest telescope, to say the least, to make the observations. So for these factors, sadly, I wasn't able to capture any moons of Jupiter or Saturn. But what I did was make consecutive observations on 19th, 20th and 21st. So in the images that follow, you can actually see the planets moving closer. And without further ado, here they are. If you want to get started at stargazing, check out my video on the review of my telescope, Breza 7700. It's a great telescope for beginners like me. Also do check out the other videos in my channel and please hit the subscribe button. So that's the video guys, thank you for watching.